and welcome back to Gran Turismo Sport for another battle video. Um, so you might remember after the recent update we did a Ford GT battle. Now that we have the GT40, the 2006 GT and the new Ford GT, um, which I quite enjoyed doing. So I started thinking about what other cars we could do. Um, we've done Nissan GTRs uh, previously and Supras and GT86s and stuff. Um, so I thought I'd do something a little bit different this time and take the 3 M3s round. Uh, now I know we don't have the newest one and we don't have there's various other models missing um, but we do have these three obviously starting with the oldest M3 Sport Evo then going to the 03 M3 and then the 07 M3 um, and interestingly the N200, N300 and N400 um, so yeah, I thought I'd take them for a lap of the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit uh, to see how much faster they've got since that original model um, to the 07 model, which unfortunately is the newest we've got. But yeah, I wanted to see how that did. Um, and yeah, obviously German racetrack for German cars. But anyway, it's going to start with 234 horsepower, 1200 kilos then moved to 339 horsepower at 1560 kilos and then moved to 415 horsepower at 1655 kilos so they're getting more powerful um, but also heavier so this could be quite interesting anyway I'm going to load up the first M3 and another green see how we get on obviously I know they're going to get faster but it's more about how different they are than which one's going to be fastest um, but anyway let's begin with the first lap. So here we are at the Nürburgring with the first M3, the Sport Evo from 1989, ready to go for the first lap. Uh, power and weight is at standard, traction controls off, sports hard so we're going to be running on everything. Um, but yeah, 234 horsepower, 1200 kilos, let's see how we do. Uh, as always it's going to be one lap and one attempt from interior view with manual gears and yeah we'll see how we get on in the first and probably slowest of the M3s that we're going to be taking round in the Nürburgring today um, but yeah let's round the final corner and begin our timed lap let's see how quick this car can be lay down a benchmark time us then to beat in the newer the newer machinery. So heading down towards the first corner. Was there a massive Mercedes grandstand? Come on. That's offensive to my BMW. I don't know who that ghost was, that definitely wasn't me doing a lap and forgetting to record it five minutes ago. Whoever it was, they're running very wide on that corner. Rubbish driving. Right out onto the curb. As we head down towards the, the hairpin. Let's see how we do down here. bit of a slide. This car does slide out but you're never worried it's going to completely let go. It's not really got enough power to kick the back end out too scarily which might change when we get into oh, into the later vehicles. Um, so obviously we've got the three M3s and then at the end I'm going to take the M4 round because that's effectively the replacement for the three-door M3 now. So, and as all of these older M3s are the three-door variant, it uh, seemed fair enough to take the M4 round after, so we will be taking that as well. Uh, but yeah, three M3s first. And coming towards the end of our first lap, the oldest of the cars. We're going to be 
putting its benchmark time down. Just one more corner to go and then we will have the time. And we're going to cross the line at a 2.32.3. Right, now let's see how we get on in one of the newer cars. So we jump to an M3 that's two models newer. For some reason we don't have the E36, I think that's the one. Uh, so we've jumped straight from the original E30 to the E46, if I'm getting my numbers right. If I'm not, don't shout at me. Um, but yeah, we've basically skipped the 90s car, um, taking the original 80s. M3 and then the 2003 is what we're taking around now. Um, then obviously we've got um, the, the newer one than this. I don't know the numbers after that. Um, but the last model that was called M3, I believe, and then on to the M4. Um, but yeah, we're up to N300. The first car we took around was uh, N200, and we have 339 horsepower, but our weight is also up to 1560. Uh, everything is stock as with the first car and traction control and whatnot's off. Tires are sports hards. Let's see how we get on in the E46 M3. You can already feel that extra power even just getting the throttle for the first time out of that corner. But it's still not overly powerful to the point you're worried it's going to completely spin itself out or step out so far that you lose time. So it's still quite enjoyable to drive. Uh, I don't like cars because they get a little bit more powerful. It feels like everything's happening a bit quickly. <laughs> They're just more difficult basically I think. But like something like this with a nice level of power. Apparently I can't quite control that, I'm going very wide. Turn it in, turn it in. Oh, bit of a kick there. That's the difference between this and the last one, it has got that little bit more power. Even if, like I said, it's still fairly tame. It's you definitely notice that difference. Obviously I know these are completely perfect laps. Same driver, only taking one run in each car. Well, yeah, I definitely only did one run in the last one. It wasn't a ghost of my previous attempt. Um, but yeah, only doing one run in each car. Um, I don't forget to switch the capture card on. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Let's see how much faster. I can't actually remember what we did. It was like 2.30 something we did in the E30. So this should be fairly... It should be a couple of seconds faster, I think. Uh, especially given we've jumped a generation, it is it's the other one 89 and this one's 03, so it's what, 14 years, 14 years difference um, we've got between these two. So, what has 14 years worth of work at BMW's M Division done? Has it been worth it? Or should they have just kept building the E30? We're going to cross the line at a 2.26.5. So let's go and quickly take a look at the leaderboard. Uh, now that we've got the two cars in it, before jumping into the third M3, um, which is going to be the third out of the four cars we take round. So there we go. A 226 rather than a 232. So that's six seconds faster after 14 years, which is uh, what's that? It's, it's quite a substantial amount per year, isn't it? Um, but anyway, 
That's the N200 and N300 vehicles. And the next M3 we're going to take round is in N400, and it's again more powerful, but slightly heavier. So here is the third M3, an N400 class 2007 M3. So we're only four years newer than, than the E46 here. Um, it's already going one generation forwards rather than two. Um, but still, it was 14 years between the others, so it should be on that. But <coughs> apparently they were making more models or changing the model more often. So yeah, everything's stock, 415 horsepower, 1,655 kilos, sports hard tyres, let's go, 226 to beat. I've actually remembered to look at the time this time, which I never remember to do. This is the model of M3 that I remember. I actually remember this one coming out, unlike the older ones. Well, of course the The E46 would have been the first M3 to come out in my lifetime, but yeah, I'd have been quite young then, so this is the one that I remember. That I remember being unveiled. The first one that I remember being unveiled. Obviously we've got, well, obviously we've got the next one I was going to say, but that is of course an M4. We'll keep going over this. The M4 is what the M3 Coupe was. I've just got very confused with their numbering on that BMW. Let's hope they can still figure out how to make a car go around a track faster, even if they don't know how to number their models. Now this car is slightly worrying when you get on the power. It does have that bit of kick to it if you go a bit too fast. Oh, bouncing it off the limiter, don't want to be doing that. Uh, it's 126 we're trying to beat, remember, or that it should beat. Ooh, actually having to lift through the Schumacher S is going that much faster than the other two. I've never really got up to enough speed to be trouble through there. Alright, just gonna go up the hill round the last couple of corners to see if they've improved again in the four year gap between this and the E46 M3. Oh, yes, I'm kind of... This car's too fast, I keep missing my braking points. Well, running deep into the corner, it's not entirely missing, entirely missing them. 2.26 to beat, and we're going to cross the line at a 2. 23. So it's only four years, but well, they've shaved another another three seconds off. So now let's go and have a look at the leaderboard. Now we've got all three M3s in it, and then we'll come back for our final lap uh, in the M4. So yes, 2.23, three seconds faster, um, but it was only a four-year um, gap, four years to improve rather than 14 and it was only one generation rather than two generations of M3. Um, but anyway, now let's jump into something that's not an M3, but is an M3 because it's an M4, and see uh, if that's even faster than the 07 M3, which it should be. So here we have the 2014 BMW M4. So we're jumping another seven years forwards, um, so more of a gap between this and the M3 than between the previous two M3s. I think this was the successor to that 07 M3. Um, do correct me if there's a model in between. There isn't on Gran Turismo, these are all the models in here, but I don't think there's a model in between. Um, but we are again in the N400 category. Um, 
This time we have 425 horsepower and weigh 1,497 kilos, which I think is actually lighter. Um, which is the first time I knew a car has been lighter <laughs> uh, in this little video anyway. Um, but yeah, make sure traction control is off because for some reason it wants it on, probably because it's uh, quite a powerful car. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can beat a 223 uh, in the M4 and beat all of the M3s that have gone before us. And prove that naming the car one number higher makes it better. Because obviously an M4 should be better than an M3 because it's 4 not 3. If that even makes sense. But yes, yeah, so it's a new model, it should be quicker. Uh, but let's see how much buy, because uh, the differences have been getting less. I'm loving that little heads up display. First car that I've first one of these that I've seen that one. I am starting to struggle a bit with the levels of power here. It's not quite got the grip for it. This point, the other three. Yes, you could feel the car sort of moving about, but they weren't ever going to completely spin. But this, I really feel like I could completely spin out um, when I least expect it. Just getting on the power a bit too early. Hopefully we can control it and do it on our first attempt because um, as always with these laps I try to do it uh, as one run and one attempt to keep it fair on all of the cars um, except when I forget to switch the catch car on which I know I've said a million times <laughs> I just can't believe I did that with the E30 lap at the beginning there but anyway let's see if it around there, definitely lifting off this time. Uh, we did in the last car but only just uh, and this was a definite lift off in the M4. Try not to kick the back end out too far there. All that all is a bit on edge this car. But yeah 223 to beat as we come up the hill towards the last couple of corners. Let's see if the M4 can do it. Down second, turn it in, got that right, didn't outbreak ourselves like we did with the previous car. Bit of a slide on the exit. 23 to beat. Can we get the power down out of the last corner without losing too much to wheel spin? And we're going to cross the line at a 2.19. The first car to drop below the 220 mark. Not bad for the M4. Um, not quite enough mileage <laughs> doing the laps around here to get a to get a prize this time. Um, but yeah, four seconds. Um, so there's actually more of a difference. Uh, I suppose it's a seven-year difference as opposed to a four-year difference. Um, so they've had more time to get this car to be nice and speedy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they are still N400, but the class system in the end doesn't mean too much here on Gran Turismo. Uh, it's not always perfectly balanced. Um, but there we go, the M4 is faster than all the M3s, who would have known it? Um, but yeah, from the original one uh, back in 89, a 232.3, up to the current M4. Well, current M4? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> they keep changing them and not making the looks that much different. Um, but anyway. From 1989 to 2014, we've gone from a 232 to a 219, um, which is, what, 13 seconds? I think it's 13 seconds, um, which is pretty impressive, really. Um, but yeah, it's always interesting to see how much these cars have improved. If you haven't seen the last video with the Ford GTs lapping Le Mans, um, do go and check that one out. That was that was an interesting one. Um, but yeah, that's going to be uh, it for this video, taking the M3s and M4 for a lap of 
um, the Nurburgring Grand Prix track to see how much they've improved. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all for this video, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll be back with the next video very soon.